All right, so now we're just gonna look at how we can chart this out. There's a bunch of different ways we can do this. Um, and I'm just gonna show you again, an easy way to do it. We've already processed our data. So we've got our control, we've got white roof, black roof, uh, metal roof, and then we've got all our data, tons and tons of data. And if we chart it all out at once, it might be just kind of crazy. So I'm gonna recommend, um, so uh, making little small samples of how you wanna do it. I mean, you can, do one for selecting every single one that's noon or you can do um, just a certain week or you can look back at the weather and see where it was a sunny day or if it was a rainy day uh, all those sorts of things where we can pull in these particular data sets but we have a really cool data set here um, that you guys generated so hooray for science um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at these sort of things i, I recommend uh, we're going to copy the the, the titles of all these so that it's easy to make a, a chart. And I'm going to come all the way down to the very bottom of our every half hour. And we're just going to dump this down here. It doesn't really matter where, just so that I've got a subset here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some numbers from up here and then drop them down. So let's do the last couple days. It looks like I got pretty warm here on the 16th. So let's just do the 15th and the 16th um, just as, a, as an example. Okay, so let me see how far we go to 5.30 here. So we can do from 5.30 all the way through the night. And we can see how those two days kind of played around. So the easiest way to do this is just to select those particular days. So there's all of our data. It is a decent amount of data, so we'll scroll down. We can do just one day if you want, but let's do the 15th or the 16th. And I'm just gonna highlight all of my data. I'm gonna do Control C. And then we're gonna come down here and then we can paste Control V or just paste them. Now we have all of our values, okay? So let's scroll down here. Now we're gonna make a, a chart from this. So one of the first things we can look at is the transition from midnight on the 14th all the way through the last day there. So let's look at it. So we've already named. So we've got C is control. If you remember, W is white. So those are things that are, are useful. So I'm going to grab that first thing and I'm just going to drag all the way down to the bottom of our data. Gets pretty warm there. And then I can come over and I'm going to do hold down control and select the next column. And then I can select the next column by holding down control. It's jumping over because I just shifted over that way, but we just want this one column. We'll look at all of the data here in just a second. Uh, next. So, and I'm going to hold down control and I've got all these little lovelies highly highlighted here. So hooray for science. Just really quick looking at it, looks like it got down to 70. So hooray summer. Oh, 69. Got down to 69, got up to 94, 95. Drops down again at night to back into the 60s, back up into the 90s. So this would be a really good one. So once I've got these guys all highlighted, we're going to go up here to insert and we're going to do our chart. There's a bunch of different charts we can do, but we're going to do the line. So here's our little 2D line, which will be able to compare all these guys together. Hooray! So we've got our chart starting up here. So I can take this chart and drag it anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down out of here. So it's past all of our data. I'm sorry, this is going slow, but we'll get there. So here's my chart that I'm going to start playing around with. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got uh, my control, my W, my B, and I can't really see this very well. So you can first off by making it taller a little bit. You can see there is some separation going on here. Um, but we're going to change our title to May 15 and 16 uh, temperature, just so that we know what we're looking at. And so. We'll do a couple things to address this up really quick. If I click over here on this, I can double click really quick. It gives us here, we're just gonna look at our minimum maximum. And so it looks like, remember it gets to the 60s, it doesn't get over 100. So let's go from 60 to 100. So I'm gonna do 60 as the bottom number minimum. You can see it dropped it down to there. And then it looks like 100 is already its top. So yeah, that's good enough for us right there. So we've got some data we can look at, X that out and now we can start looking at these data. 
So I can stretch this out even more and I can really see where we're starting to see separation. So what we did is we went through cooling off at midnight, warming up during the day, peaking out around three o'clock, getting colder. So it drops off pretty quickly, gets colder, warms up, cools off, warms up. And so you'll notice that what is warming up the most among all of our uh, bird boxes is the metal roof. Um, we can go in here and we can even change these colors. If I highlight, I double click there. So our metal roof is in yellow, which is fine. Um, so we'll leave that one uh, yellow there. Um, oh, let's make it more fun. So we can make it red as an example. And there we've got a different color. Um, I can switch over here and I can look at uh, double clicking on this one. Um, that's black. So we can make that pretty easy. We'll just, there's the black color. So that's what the black roof looks like. Uh, we've got white is orange. That's a little bit annoying, but hey, I'm going to make it this uh, lighter green color um, just because we won't be able to see white on a white background. Makes sense if you think about it. And then our control, um, we can make our control any color we want. Let's make it purple just for fun. Uh, and so you can see our control, we actually have a really close relationship between our control and black, interestingly enough, as they come through here, where we're actually seeing the cooler temperatures are white. So white is actually staying colder here and our metal is staying hotter. Well, the black is a little bit warmer, but not too much more than the control. So there's not a big impact there. In fact, in some cases, it's a little bit warmer than the others. So that's the sort of stuff we're looking for right there. So we made our nice little temperature thing. I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, and so let's look and see uh, just on a shorter one. So I'll look at my little data and we'll make one other really quick chart and then you can play around with this however you want. We'll just do um, the temperature and relative humidity just for the 14th because it's up here. So again, if you want to make different charts, what I recommend is just um, collecting all of your data and then copying it and then pasting it down below, holding down control. And now we're going to look at just this one 24 hour period of time. And we're going to see how our relative humidity plays in there. And you can add in barometric pressure and all sorts of stuff, but we just looked at this to be simple. Obviously these things can get crazy complicated if you think about it. So let's go ahead and insert ourselves another um, 2D line chart. Boom. Now I've got a bunch of numbers on there, right? So I'm going to take this and run it down below. So it's out of the way. Actually, let's we'll run it off to the side. So there's all our data and um, we've got our numbers. Oh, I really did get the top part of it. Oh, well, I'll do this really quick again. Blah. So what happened is I forgot to get the titles. So it didn't pull in the titles there. So I'm going to scroll back over. So this is science. We make mistakes. We correct those mistakes. So one 24 hour period of time. So we'll go from midnight to midnight. I'm going to go ahead and grab that one too. So let's try that again. Holding down control. I want the titles. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit more difficult than I want it to be keeping track of it. So yoop. And then we're going to come over here. And so as a scientist, I know I'm a really big nerd. I know you're probably shocked at that, but I love playing with data. Um, so lots of data sets there. Spreadsheets are good times, fun. Look, okay, now we got this, ha ha. Um, so let's scroll over here and give an area that we can play around with our new little chart that we made. So here's our new little chart, Yoink, off over here. We're gonna rename this. And so this is May the 15th. Um, this is temperature and relative humidity, just so that I know what I'm mapping out. Okay. So this is, um, the numbers over here is either going to be temperatures in Fahrenheit, or it's going to be the, uh, uh, percentage of relative humidity. Remember humidity actually can be, um, uh, a pretty big indicator there. So, uh, uh, we have sensible heat and then we've got latent energy. So we can see this fun little squiggles going on there. So let's make this so that it helps us understand a little bit better. So it looks like um, 50 and 100 is probably good again. I'm going to double click here. I'm going to get my minimum is 50. I'm just trying to stretch out the data and it's automatically stretched it to 50 and 100. So it's happy with that. And so now I can kind of look at my data all scrunched up right here. 
And so we're looking at over a, a 24 hour period of time. So there's 58 steps, taking this 48 steps because uh, it's every 30 minutes. Um, and I've got my temperature, my relative humidity. And so let's make this so it's a little bit easier to read, okay? So I'm gonna click on the uh, relative humidity here. So let's go to our options of how we can format our colors here. Where did my color go? Doop, 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 doop. Um, and then I can switch my little color there. So there's my relative humidity. I can see that it's orange. Let's make this easier to read. I'm going to do my dashes. There's just tons of stuff you can play around with this. I'm going to choose the third one down there. Um, and all my relative humidities. Um, looks like our control. So let's do our control is going to be green in this one. And so there's our temperature. I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to get the color. And I want to leave the line solid because it's our temperature and I'm going to make it also green. So my green line is temperature, and then my dotted line is our relative humidity. Okay, see, boop, boop. So we're gonna do this with all of our other data here. So here's the, the white one. And so let's make the white one blue. Sure, we'll make this one blue. That's a temperature, so I want it solid line color. So hooray for that. Uh, relatively, relative humidity for the white. And again, I'm making it, can't make it white because we won't be able to read it. So there's blue, and then we're going to make that the dashed line. See how I made it a dashed line? How cool is that? We're making a beautiful, lovely little chart. Uh, relative humidity for black. I'm going to double click on that. It's going to move me over. So black is intuitive. So we'll make the black color there. Relative humidity for uh our black roof, we're going to make it black, but then we're going to make it dashed so I can make see the difference between it. And then we've got our metal roof. I think our metal roof makes sense. We'll make it a good gray color there. That's a temperature, so I'll leave it solid. And then this one, I'm going to make it gray again, but I'm going to make it dashed. All right, so let's close out that. Now I got fun squiggles, right? Look at all these fun squiggles. What you're looking at is here's the temperature. As the temperature gets colder, you know, see the relative humidity goes up. And as the temperature gets warmer, the relative humidity goes down. And this is a really important thing to understand in climate. Um, so warmer air holds more moisture than colder air. So when we actually get the temperature gets colder and our, our relative humidity uh, starts to drop off, we can look exactly, it actually drips below 50% down here. And we, which one's dropping below 50%? Well, that's our metal roof. And so here we have our metal roof getting the warmest and it has the lowest relative humidity during the day. And it takes a long time to cool off. Like it's taking a lot longer to cool off than these guys, our metal roof is. Interestingly enough, it takes longer for it to warm up as well. So as our temperature goes up, we can see our relative humidity starts to go back down and it drops off pretty good. Now the black roof, the black roof actually cools off and look how fast it drops. So it heats up really quickly as opposed to the white roof, which is blue, is actually coming in a little bit lower than our control, but we can see a separation between our control here with our relative humidity. So our relative humidity actually lingers a little bit during the day. Interesting, huh? I hope you think it's interesting. I think it's fascinating. And so what you're looking at is over the days, and you can look at every individual day or your whole data set, you can see that we are, if you were living in that birdhouse, if you had a metal roof on your house, you're actually, without insulation, of course, you're actually gonna get warmer quicker, your relative humidity is gonna go down, but it's gonna take a while for that to come off. So you can actually see that it cools down uh, pretty quickly as opposed to the, uh, the, the, the black roof. So we got our black roof and then our controls in green. Um, so as you look at the nighttime, there's not a big separation in the temperatures. All the lines are really close together. We do see a separation in the humidity. The humidity takes a little while to, to catch back up. But look at how, how fast when the sun hits those birdhouses. See this really sharp turn? Relative humidity drops in the, the black one, the green one, the blue one, and then the 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 gray one just really slowly. So that's the black roof, the control, the white roof, 
And then the metal roof, interestingly enough, actually takes a little while because it insulates for a bit, then it gets hot, and then it starts to really make a big difference. So there's our example of our little data sets of all the different numbers and everything that you can get out of it. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and then you guys can play around with all the data. You can change all the numbers, and you can change the colors. You can do whatever color you want. You can make it as pretty as you want. But these are all the data. We can monitor any sorts of things. We can do this with our terrarium experiment that we did. And we can go back and look at our data. We could even slow down our sensor if we don't want every single minute. We could do every 15 minutes, um, however. But anyway, it's a lot of data processing, but you guys did a fantastic job.